struggling on the road to get a road win. He needs to play well tonight. One in four on the road so far, and they face Georgia Tech, which needs what? They need these two young men to play exceptionally well. Miles Kelly needs to get out of this shooting slump. He's four of his last 23. And Davion Smith, late clock, late game situation. They need the ball in his hands, and he needs to make plays for Georgia Tech to win tonight. We are ready to go from the Camish Pavilion. Game two of our quadruple header. That was a good one in Winston-Salem to get it started. It was a good game. Unfortunately, the Deeks, my Deeks took, took it out oh. today, but NC State, tough team, played exceptionally well. Duke on the road in the black trying to solve this Georgia Tech zone early on. They play zone 12th most of any team in the country. Jeremy Roach connects from deep back into the starting lineup. Meanwhile, for Georgia Tech, you talked about Davon Smith. Three double-doubles in his last five games, and then Miles Kelly is their leading scorer at 13 a game. They're going to have to cut really well, really confuse Duke in their switch in defense if they want to score just like that. What a block by Kyle Filipowski with a denial on Miles Kelly. Josh Pastner, year seven, he told us the story today about recruiting John Shire <laughs> back in 2005. Try to get him to go to Arizona, but the weekend of that visit, Arizona had lost in the Elite Eight. They had blown their big lead over Illinois, so Josh Pastner said to us today it was about one of the worst visits you could ever imagine. It was really bad. He been, Josh Shire was trying to be nice about it and explain how bad of a visit it actually was. Rodney Howard with the first points for Georgia Tech. John Shire changes up his starting lineup. You heard Kelsey talk about no Dariq Whitehead. He's out after the injury on Monday that we'll show you. So Roach in, Lively in, and this was the Whitehead injury in Blacksburg on Monday. Scary sight if you're a Duke fan or just a fan of anyone. You don't want anyone to get hurt when you see something like that, grabbing that back leg like that. Great news, it's just a lower leg injury. He'll return at some point. We don't know exactly when, but just great news that he'll be returning to college basketball. John Shire told us, about an hour ago here pregame. It's a ligament strain. Yes. It, it's not Achilles, and that was great to see because that was everyone's fear. It's not cap either, but like you yeah. said, lower leg it, ligament strain that'll keep him out. You know what it is? It's one of those terms that a coach can't pronounce, so you just say lower leg. <laughs> <laughs> Second three for Jeremy Roach, who is healthy and producing early on. Well, it's a great sign for Duke that Jeremy Roach is back and he's playing well. But for Georgia Tech, you got to have a little bit of concern because their game plan is to defend the size and length of Duke inside, and they want to concede the three-point shots. But right now, Jeremy Roach is off to a hot start, making two shots from down beyond the arc. That's what Josh Pastor told us at shoot-around today. If they make 14 threes, we'll pack up. Yeah. We'll try it again in the midweek. Yeah, sometimes you just accept it. Rodney Howard bounces underneath for Jalen Moore, who had it roll off the rim. Offensive rebound battled for by Moore, but Duke secures it up by four early on. Well, if you're running Princeton offense the way Georgia Tech does, the big man has to have more assists. You run the offense through your bigs in that mid post, and they do a lot of handling of the basketball. So their ability to hit cutters and find guy open shooters is big. Like that, Filipowski cutting at that end of the floor off the delivery from Lively and Filipowski to the line. Just him cutting down the lane and Duke, Georgia, just attacking Georgia, Georgia Tech's defense. They have to decide how they want to guard ball screens. They hedged. Rodney Howard late getting back in the paint to help out. And when you're guarding a guy that's scoring like that, he just finds ways. And that way, if he's not, you know, getting on the post, not shooting threes, you don't want to leave the best lead, the best player on the floor. Philip Housen cuts down the lane and now he's shooting two. With four straight double doubles, he's got ten total. Look at the numbers these last four games for Kyle Filipowski. Just as good as anybody in the country right now over that span. I mean, four games. I mean, that's 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 big time number. You don't see those numbers from freshmen, but he's just been nothing short of outstanding in the way he's been doing it. And it's just it's just amazing to me. And we'll get into that later. I mean, a guy that not many saw this from. If you went to Duke and saw them early in the year, you didn't think that he'd be playing this well. Despite being the number seven recruit in the country, that's what John Shire said to his pregame. Pass tournament saves it at midcourt for Georgia Tech with just two points, three minutes in. Until his tournament jumper, he's very good in the mid-range. He is. He's much. He's very comfortable in getting to pull up jump shots. And they're going to need to take those shots. I mean, Duke's going to take away threes. They're one of the better three-point defending teams at the three-point line, and also protecting the rim. And 
They're going to concede mid-range shots. Sturdivant steps in and knocks one down. Filipowski turned it over. He got met defensively by Rodney Howard. That's the difference in the seniors' bodies and the freshman body right there. <laughs> freshman, as much as he's worked and changed his body type. That Rodney is Howard's a grown pounds. man. Yeah, that's yeah. a grown man right there. And this is what we're talking about now. The pressure is having Rodney Howard turn his back. And Tough two not there for Davon Smith, but an offensive rebound, and then Lively went straight up defensively on Howard. Lively's doing what he does. I mean, he blocks shots and he rebounds. Tyrese Proctor off target from deep. Lively on the stick back. On cue. And he's doing what he, you know, that's why he's been inserted into the lineup. Challenge a little bit. His strength is protecting the rim. It's not the typical offensive skill set of what you think of the number one player in the country. But he defends and runs well, as well as anybody in the country. John Shire told us pregame he's coming. Talking about Lively. Jump shot affected there off the arm of Miles Kelly. And Duke runs with Mark Mitchell. The freshman spinning. Forced one up. Lively back out. Extra pass Roach. Wanted his third three run down by Sturdivant. Lively's very active on both ends of the floor there. Got an offensive rebound last play and contested that jump shot as well. Debo Coleman connects. Sophomore known for his shooting, but just 31% from three this season. Needs to get more out of Debo Coleman. He's capable of it. I think he needs to get himself more in the offensive glass, get himself going in games. He's definitely has the physicality to play in this game in the post against bigger, bigger lineup of Duke. All right, Derek Lively makes his first <laughs> collegiate three on just his fifth attempt. And we talked about it. You asked me why was he shooting threes in the pregame, and that's why. <laughs> Take that, Mike Monaco. Yeah, go figure. <laughs> he is coming indeed. And this is what Mike uh, Lively does as well. You see he's making Rodney Howard extend the catch. Sturdivant kicks it back out. Late shot clock for Davon Smith with Filipowski on him. Smith short, cleared by Mitchell. Filipowski knocks it down. Great start for Duke on the road. We're having a three-point shooting contest here in Midtown, and Dirk Lively's joined the three-point shooting show here. Number one recruit showing at 14 and six overall, five and four in the ACC. All four of those conference losses have come on the road. But we were talking with John Shire about a pregame. You asked him; he feels like they've grown and gotten more comfortable playing away from home. Well, you saw the first two games; they gave up 80 plus points, didn't score, it wasn't as effective, really weren't close games. And then the last two games, you see them getting better and better. And that's what you expect. Duke has always been a slow starting team because usually the first road game doesn't come until they get into the ACC conference schedule. They're figuring things out. This team is getting better, which is a great time as you're heading to February for the final 11 games of the ACC. He said to us, he felt like Duke outplayed Clemson for 35 minutes in that close game. And then Virginia Tech, what a way for the Hokies to get off the schneid on Monday. Just a... Uh, you know, Virginia Tech, who, who's, what do you say about that team? You got two ACC wins against Duke and Carolina and lose to everyone in between. Uh, but that team's finally healthy now. They're playing good basketball. It's always tough to beat them in Blacksburg. And credit to Duke now. They're figuring things out. This is a team that's been banged up, missing quite a bit of guys. They haven't had their roster for 12 guys all year long. 12 games, rather, all year long. Saw the take from Jalen Moore. Georgia Tech with seven points. Here in these first six minutes. But this is the part of the game I thought Georgia Tech has to be good at. Baseline out of bounds, after timeout, and sideline out of bounds. They have to win that game. That's a game within itself, scoring where it's unscripted. Being able to sneak some baskets in. Had an opportunity today and just turned it over. They're coming off a 21-point loss at Clemson at Little John on Tuesday. And Josh Pastner said after the game, maybe four or five times, we can't score. He was just lamenting the fact that they're getting good looks, but they've really struggled offensively. So, to your point, that's where you got to steal some buckets. Yeah. We talked about it. Which team was the best three-point shooting team for this game? I mean, Georgia Tech needs to make about 10, I thought, to win. And Fashion agreed that that's a, a good number. One for two from three so far. There's an offensive rebound for Rodney Howard. And he will go to the line. 
Great job sealing that inside. Had a guard trying to box him out. And got inside a lively, been able to seal him off. And Rodney Howard's done a really good job of getting on the glass and being physical when he's been out there. And yeah, we've seen that a few times. He goes to the line for Josh Pastner. You can just feel the frustration from Josh Pastner this morning. And in those post-game comments Tuesday, he went so far as to say, we just can't throw it in the ocean no. standing on a pier. Because when you're standing in, you don't have the ability to make shots. It, it just makes the game tougher. And when you get in this round of conference play against game, teams like Duke, they're going to switch everything. So a lot of your half-court sets are just not going to work unless you got to attack switches and slips, but they got a few looks early. It just comes down to, you got, at some point, you got to make shots. They just don't have as many guys as Duke as when the play breaks down, that, hey, go get me a bucket. And that's just not Georgia Tech's strength right now in the offensive end. They're within seven. Mitchell drives and his pass through the arms of Derek Lively. And the third turnover by Duke so far. Good idea of Mitchell just driving. I don't think Lively was expecting him to throw the ball to him. Good idea, just bad execution. But you like the unselfish basketball there. Ball in the hands of Tristan Maxwell, the junior, only playing in his 21st career game. Known for some scoring off the bench, has dealt with a lot of different issues over his three years on the flats. They're having opportunities here with their motion off the ball. They're just not seeing the open cutters right now. Or off the mark from deep and back to Duke. Yeah, that's not the shot you want. You know, Moore is only three of 21 in a year. He's shooting 14 percent from three. They're having guys, but they, Duke's defense. Credit Duke's defense. They're pressuring that high post guy, forcing him to turn his back. He can't see the motion and cutters behind him, and that's hurting him, hurting his scoring. So Ryan Young check in for Derek Lively, who gave seven strong minutes out of the gates for John Shire. Mitchell turned the corner. A lot of contact, and Mitchell threw that contact. I'm just such a huge fan of Mark Mitchell. I think he plays his role as well as anyone. I mean, he's a 3 and D guy. Turns the corner here, takes the contact, and finishes with the right hand. And again, numbers are good. Scoring's really well. I mean, he got shooting nearly 50% from the floor and 42% from three. And that just tells you when young guys' percentages are that high, they know what they know who they are. And I think he plays that role, his role on this team exceptionally well. And it prompted the second foul on Jalen Moore. Goes to the bench for Josh Pastner. They're going to go over and confirm who the foul's on. It got announced here as Kyle Sturdivant, but it is on Moore. And so it is his second. Yeah, I think Pastner was ahead of it and knew that it was just a mix-up. Mitchell stamps a three-point play, and the lead is 10. What a luxury to... To have a 20th ranked recruit in the country come out and the 10th ranked recruit come in. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> nice. <laughs> Embarrassment of riches on the front court of the Duke, Duke basketball team right now. Great defense there. Blakes took it away from Sturdivant, who then commits the foul. His first after the swipe from the masked man, Jalen Blakes. With the Batman mask on, Jalen <laughs> Jalen Blakes has just been a, their best on ball defender. In, competes on both ends of the floor and he's been great all year on their own ball defense and just doing what he does when he comes in. Do you want to give us a, a Batman voice? I don't have a good one. Okay. Me either. So I won't do it. All right. But I love the mask though. I do too. <laughs> I love the mask. John Shire told us pregame he thinks Blakes is, is still adjusting to it. We'll see more minutes out of him with Whitehead injured. Debo Coleman helped out defensively. Still 19 left to shoot for Duke. You're so concerned if you're Georgia Tech. You're just trying to keep everything in front. And great look by Filipowski. Debo comes down on the weak side and blocks it. Filipowski just got met at the rim. Georgia Tech runs. Maxwell lays it in. Duke pushes right back with Blakes attacking. Blocked by Howard. Jack gets run again. Maxwell drops it off for Miles Kelly. And Georgia Tech building some momentum here in the first half. That goes on what we talked about, about getting some opportunities. You get some fast break points, you got to steal some of those. You know, they need to get out and get as many quick baskets as possible. Eight-point Duke lead, eight minutes in on the flats in Atlanta. <laughs> Talented player here, and I think he's critical for this game. Not just for this game, but for this team, because when the shot clock runs down, he's the one guy that you can give the ball to and say, hey, go make me a play. 
And I'm wondering if he's a legit 6 1, too. I think I got him by a couple of inches here, but I don't think I have a 45 inch vertical. And, and what are you height wise? I think I'm 6 2. Okay. I give him, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I give him six feet. I give him that. I give him that. And, and you bring up this 45. Yeah. He told us that pregame. He did. He has been maxed out, tested at 45 and a half inches on his vertical. He said that was in preseason testing. Yeah. And then they also have tested again a couple of times during the season. I don't know what it's like to get up that high no. other than flying. He and Georgia Tech trail by eight with the shot clock winding down on Tristan Maxwell who bounces inside for Howard. Back out Coleman off target at the horn. Great job defending there of Duke communicating on his switches not leaving Georgia Tech to get anything easy. at the controls with Roach off the ball. Filipowski driving on Coleman, kicked away by Howard with 13 to shoot on reset to 20. That's just Filipowski showing a skill set there. Great defense on the ball, keeping him in front of you. When he has a smaller defender right there, he wants to get to his spot and just shoot right over guys. So credit to Georgia Tech and Debo. Good hands by Maxwell as Filipowski flashed to the block. Got to watch the players and not the guy out of bounds until he passes the ball in bounds there. Quickly moved for Young. Passing out of the post. Good interior passing. Young finishes and the foul. It's difficult to come down. You almost got to leave him one on one. He's just a tremendous passer. He's seeing right over top of the defense. You just got to leave him there against Frank. Late rotation down by Trice. Tries to Maxwell there, and he commits the foul. I mean, just, just tough, tough for Tristan to get there. So Ryan Young to the stripe, Northwestern transfer, who Georgia Tech recruited very hard. Thought they had him out of the portal. Josh Pastner told us that he did think he was going to get Ryan Young. Got him into the Masters program here, with Young wanting to study yeah. business down the road. And Ryan Young said this week that he liked how he would have fit into the Georgia Tech offense with a post player. Operating from the elbow. The well, Lepowski is fouled. Well, you know how many times uh, or how many schools have lost out the players that <laughs> Duke's recruited? So I, I can sign up for a few guys. So I, nobody's going to feel sorry for Josh on that one. But no, he was he was close. I think he felt really comfortable that Ryan Young was going to come here. But hey, he, he made a great choice. I mean, you can make the argument, and I think I would make the argument that he's been Duke's second best player this year. He's been so consistent. And he brings a dimension that they don't have. When everything breaks down, they can throw the ball inside to him in the post. And he's a load down there in the post, turning over that left shoulder. And they can play through him. Yes. When everything breaks down, they're not making jump shots, because this is not a great three-point shooting team. So when they're struggling a little bit, they find him in the post, and he helps them in, when their offense gets stagnant. He goes to the bench. Lively replaces him as Filipowski splits at the stripe, with Duke doubling up Georgia Tech midway through this first half. Jaden Shute is getting ready to come into the ballgame as well for Duke. Hasn't played in three and a half weeks. Smith probing, lively trying to stick with him. Javon Franklin flash, drives, and finishes. Great finish there by Javon, getting to his left hand, getting to his left hand off the drive. Duke is just so difficult inside there because they they got two seven-footers on the floor. So if you get by Filipowski, you got lively there challenging the shot. Just a great drive and finish there. Against the zone, Roach. Into the mid-range, no. Lively's been good. Howard met him up top. Got Maxwell it. Hoist and hits. Transition again for Georgia Tech. Those are the shots you need to get here. You got to get stops and attack this defense before they get set. They block the shots in transition. Great three there by Maxwell. Filipowski high low with Lively goes right back to Filipowski who couldn't corral it and a Fort Duke turnover. Another turnover here. Want to try to tackle the transition here. Talk about the offensive struggles for Georgia Tech. So Josh Pastner has been saying we've got to have fast break points and we've got to have second chance points and got to limit turnovers as well. Great, great block by Rodney Howard getting up, blocking Lively shot, running the floor and. Maxwell rewarding his team for getting him the ball to the three-point line. Georgia Tech sticking around. There's no quitting these guys. They've been competitive all year, and I don't see anything changing. 
Despite the 8-12 record, 1-9 in the ACC. Of course, their only win against top 25 Miami. Proctor, no. Offensive rebound, Mitchell. Blocked again by Howard. And along the sideline, Smith stepped out of bounds. Rodney, Rodney Howard's been outstanding early in the game. He's blocking shots. He's been physical inside. This is an undersized team. He's the only guy that matches the size and physicality of this Duke team. And if you're passionate, I don't know how you take him out of the game. He's made a huge impact. Four points, five rebounds. Two blocks now for yeah. Howard, and to your point, he's played all 11 minutes. He has, but he, his physicality, you can see. I mean, he's the one guy I think can guard the Duke front line man to man. Filipowski on the interior. Backs it out for Mitchell with seven to shoot. Proctor hits this time. They're going to concede three point shooting. They know that. And you know, that's the fifth three so far in the first half this afternoon for Duke. And they're going to make those shots. You just tip your hat to them and get ready for the next game. But they're going to pack it in, control the lane, because they know they have to rebound. One thing that's been consistent with this Duke team has been their ability to rebound the basketball. They're one of the nation's best. Franklin driving. Good defense from Filipowski. And last touch by Franklin. Yeah, it's a difficult play there. Javon Franklin, you don't want to leave your feet when you drive. Just drive, play on two feet. Got in the air there. And you definitely don't want to pass the 6'10 guys around in their knees or their feet. They don't get that low <laughs> to get those balls. I, trust me, I got yelled at a many a day right. trying to pass bounce passes to a big. They want those up top toward the rim. Tim Duncan wanted it a little higher. Is yeah, that what you're telling me? Yeah, just a little bit. Just a little bit. I needed a good pass by Proctor for shoot. Too strong. Rebound Maxwell. That's what you got to do. Limit them to one shot and rebound, no matter what that shot is. They prefer it to be a three like that, and you live with the cost. Duke got back in transition, and then they foul Tristan Maxwell. Credit Georgia Tech. They got the game plan. They're going to stick to it. You know, you be conceding. They're going to give up these threes, and you just want to say, hey, whatever shot is taken, let's make sure we limit the one and not give them any offensive rebounds. But this is part of the game they got to score offensively. They have to score out of their baseline out of bounds. Sort of special teams, right? They have to. It's just a part of the game. You got to win this part because you're going to struggle against the switching and all the half court, the half court defense. Lively's pressed down on Howard, who turns it over, trying to connect with Coleman. Nine point Duke lead on the road here in Atlanta in the first half. Now, two quick ones. And surprisingly, Derek Lively's gotten to the party, but all the guys are chipping in. So I reached Proctor, the freshman from Australia, is coming in, knocking down shots. This is the game plan for Georgia Tech. They're going to concede these threes, and if Duke's going to knock them down, Coach Pastor said, hey, we're just going to look forward to the next game if they do. But right now, Duke's cooling off a little bit. I mean, they're shooting better from three from two. You've got you to live with that. So you're going to continue to control the paint. The one thing we know this Duke team does do great is rebound the ball. Three-point shooting come and goes. They're not as hot. They're cooling off a little bit. Let's see if they can pick that back up. But for Georgia Tech, they did what they needed to do. Now they got to pick things up on the offensive event if they want to get back in this game. Josh Pastner said to us at shoot around, all we've talked about is winning the game in the paint. Yes. And, and as you've outlined and did so there, that's the gamble they're making. That's the choice that Duke for the season is 32% from three. They make fewer than seven per game. So that's his decision. You have to. You can't give up both because if you get spread out, they're small. Georgia Tech's a small team, and this Duke is one of the biggest teams in the country. So when they spread you out, we know they're one of the best rebounding and offensive rebounding teams in the country. They're taking that away, and they're playing the percentages. This Duke team only shoots 32% from the line, from behind the arc. So you want to concede that. You got to concede something, and they're going to live with, hey, pack in our zone, run our typical zone principles. Shoot ran free on the baseline. This is his second. Lively, another offensive rebound. Proctor for three. And the key to that is you got to eliminate. You got to eliminate Duke with one shot. You can't let them offensive rebound, kick out wide open, uncontested three. And a three-point shooting contest continues for the Duke. Four rebounds for Lively. They're all offensive rebounds. Filipowski did a nice job staying with Coleman. And now Davon Smith with Mitchell hounding him. Shot clock below 10 for Maxwell. Falling away, tough shot, no. Great defensive possession there by Mitchell, just switching multiple times and keeping the ball out of, out of the paint. 
using his length to contest it. Now he's posting up Smith, battling the front. Filipowski. Oh, teardrop after slashing on the rip through. Just so skilled, just catching it, shoots it off the drive, off the three and post up. Just a difficult matchup. That's why he's playing as well as anyone in the country. We step aside, Duke up 13 on the road. Kyle Filipowski has been so fun to watch this season. And yeah, number seven recruit in the country right. in our ESPN 100, but you saw him in the preseason yeah. and it didn't look that way. And as you know, we talked with Shaw earlier, he looked anything like that, anything but that early on. I mean, he had all these highly talented freshmen and he just didn't look the part. You know, things were just so fast for him. He didn't play very well. I didn't come thinking very highly of him. And, Boy, has he hit the switch and, and turn, improved everyone wrong. And I'm there with many of scouts, and I mean, half the NBA teams were there, and he just didn't have a really good productive day in that, those two days. And to see what he's become is just a credit to him and the staff, the effort and work he's put in. He looks confident. He's showing his skill set, and he looks like one of the best players in college basketball right now, doing it all. Foul on the rebounding action goes against Duke. I mean, John Shire said to us pregame, yeah. we were wondering if we were going to be able to play him he, this he, season. He and, and he told us he had to kick Filipowski yes. out of a practice. I was the there that day. Yeah, I was there that day. And when I heard the ranking and heard he was rated that high, it was kind of like, that kid won't play for the machine. He can't play. And he has just been incredible to watch his development and his confidence and his body's growing and his strength. And just seeing how he's playing. He's just, there's a toughness about him that, you didn't see in September that he's playing with now, and it's just credit to him first, and then the staff and believing in him and, and, and sticking with him, and he's developing to their guy. He's the guy. Here. There he is, going to work on Franklin. Offensive foul, first foul on Kyle Filipowski. That's part of being young as well. His development, he had the advantage. He just gets the ball, takes his time, settles down a little bit there. I don't think he picks up that foul. Left elbow there. Caught Javon Franklin in the face, and he's got to take a seat. If I'm Kyle Filipowski, I'm saying, well, that is a very similar area to where I got punched in the throat on Monday. Yeah, don't have me out here defending Duke. I, 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 <laughs> As a former Demon Deacon, you're saying? <laughs> but no, I thought that was a difficult call. I thought it should have been a flagrant one when I saw it, and I know it would have flipped the game. Toward for Duke and giving him free throws and the ball late. But in my eyes, that was a flagrant one. Mitchell down the lane, missed it at the rim. Georgia Tech wants to run. Last couple of shots have gone to Miles Kelly, who scored his first two, then missed the three. Now Coleman driving, held his pivot foot and backs it out for Smith. I think Georgia Tech needs to do more conscious effort of attacking when they get the ball in transition. They're looking too much to, to run their half-court offense, and I just don't think they can... Those type of shots, that's a difficult shot there by, by Davon Smith. And he can do that, but I think he's the only guy late in the clock that they can create shots on his own. His first points, joining Kelly a couple of possessions prior, like we said, and Georgia Tech hanging around within nine with less than five to go in the first half. Filipowski getting ready to come back in as Mitchell is fouled, and Josh Pastner is irate, about to rip his coat off. Passing about ready to snatch his jacket off with that. Javon Franklin went up, and I thought that was a great block there. I think the freshman got caught in the air, going to his left side. Instead of shooting it with his right hand, he shot it with his left. And I thought Javon Franklin had a heck of a defensive play there. Josh Pastner in the year 2023 said he's giving up slamming the scorer's table. So it sounds like the, the jacket is the next source of where he takes out his frustration. Yeah, he's going to throw the jacket here and come out of it pretty soon. He's not going to slap the table, but he's going to throw his jacket. And again, I think shot blocking and getting out of transition has been so critical for this team. They're going to need to get all the second chance points and opportunities that they, that they can because they're going to struggle against Duke's length in, in the half court. Yeah, it's five blocks for Georgia Tech yeah. already. And they've scored a half dozen fast break points as well. Mitchell swirls that one out, so he splits. And the lead is 10 for Duke.
Now, the one advantage they have, Jamon Franklin is a lot smaller than Howard, but I think he's a better passer when you get the ball in that, that mid-post area. Couple of jump shots have gone for Smith, and John Shire wants a timeout. He, he's the guy. If you want to get it going, it's got to get going with Davon Smith as he's joining the party. Scoring the last five for Georgia Tech. We've got a game here in Midtown, folks. We talked about it in the opening. He's got to have a big game for Georgia Tech if they want to win here against Duke. He's the one guy when a late clock, shot clock situation happens, you got to put the ball in his hand. He can make plays off the dribble and make those clutch shots, hit the last five to go to Tech. Let's see if that gets him going. He talked about with us today after shoot around how they have changed some things in the offense with what you had seen on film. Yes. He's the guy that can go create a bit yes. for them. He's the guy, late shot clock. Everyone else needs to system, and it's hard against teams like Duke because they switch everything. So when they switch, they're going to force you to make plays. He's one guy that can make plays for himself and his teammates. They got to rebound these baskets here. There it is. Smith got there and then tried to save it, threw it back out. Young underneath, scores. Just tough luck there. You love the effort. Anytime your six-foot guard is out there leading your team in rebounding, but just try to throw it away to this, toward his basket, and Duke's limp just catches it and catches it and scores. Just a tough break for Georgia Tech there. And the good thing about Franklin in the poster, I think he's a better passer than Howard from this position, which is critical when you run a Princeton-style offense. Shot clock winding down on Smith. Missed the runner. And the rebound to Jeremy Roach. Okay, Grandison with the entry for Ryan Young. Tech's now in their man-to-man -man defense, switching up the zone a little bit. Good seal, good pass, Filipowski the flush. The interior passing of the Duke Bigs has just been great. They're catching the ball in the post, and Young is such a really gifted scorer there. And gets an angle on his defender and just drops it off to an easy, easy, du easy dunk there by, by Filipowski. He's got 10 to lead all scorers. A lot of space for Jalen Moore. He's only hit three triples this season. And Duke's the other. You know, I think that's their similar game plan there as well against Georgia Tech. They want to force them to knock down shots, and right now Duke's making them, and Georgia Tech's not. Young going to work again, and Ryan Young is cooking. He's really good in the post. I mean, he is as gifted. He is their best interior post player, getting the ball and scoring. And Three straight great possessions from Ryan Young. Back in Eastern, Clemson in Tallahassee against Florida State. And then Syracuse against Virginia Tech off that win Monday that snapped a seven-game slide. Clemson, by the way, will get back Chase Hunter in this game. Well, that's a great thing. I mean, it, it, Chase Hunter is that guy we talked about, late clock situation, make, go make a play. But how about Florida State and Virginia Tech? I mean, two teams that are now getting healthy, and you look at their rankings in the conference, and you're thinking Florida State's a lot better than that, but they're better than their records in conference play. They're not teams you want to play in February. In Tallahassee, too, against a ranked team coming in. You know that the tuck will be rocking. Coleman spins one out. The rebound snatched by Filipowski. Kiro Martinoff, freshman from Ontario, seven footer, 10 in white, has checked in for just the fifth time this season. He's only played 14 minutes all year for Josh Pastner. You need size on the floor right now. He fouls Filipowski. Duke is just so big and they got so much length. And again, this Georgia Tech team is extremely small. So you gotta get some size out there. He comes into the game and he hadn't he hadn't played against Filipowski much. And it's like this big guy moving like a guard out there. Filipowski just catches it and realizes, like, hey, this guy hadn't played a lot. Let me find him and get the ball and go make a play against him. That's the one thing this program has done even for many years. They will attack someone that just gets in the game. Hey, our women's basketball quadruple header is tomorrow. Louisville Syracuse starts it off at noon Eastern. Then 16th ranked Duke against number 24 Florida State. Followed by 15th ranked UNC. Squaring off with Clemson and then Virginia Tech. Virginia caps the day. Filipowski makes both. The lead is 15 as large as it has been for Duke. 
See, Duke is up, and they want to pass the ball to the mid post and start the offense. But Duke bigs are up. They're denying that pass. They're not letting them catch it there at the elbow, and they're going to concede that jump shot there all game. Rodney Howard stops an 8-0 run. Rodney Howard's been great this game on both ends of the floor. Just active on the offensive glass. Hadn't got a lot of offensive looks there. And he's up playing like a wing in the zone right now. This zone is really extended. Roach drives and kicks. Now Proctor back for Grandison. Yes. Great ball moving by Duke. Driving, getting the paint, force rotation, finding the open shooter. Howard tried his luck again, and an air ball this time. Yeah, they're just searching for answers for the team. Rodney Howard's been playing great. Took that last shot, knocked it down, and, and they're going to give it to him. You know, they're going to give him that shot. and Just shot that one a little short, but hey, this Duke team's length is really, this team is coming together. They're playing better on the road. We saw that when the recent scores. They played Clemson tough. They played Virginia Tech tough. Went healthy, two of the better teams in this league. And, and even Georgia Tech, they've lost six straight. But this team is competing, and they do defend. They defend very well. And they're one of the nation's best with defending the three-point line. But when Duke is scoring the way they are right now, shooting 6 of 13 from behind the line, they're just having their way early. Coming up on the final 20 seconds of this first half. Looking to get Filipowski in the post. That'll do. Yeah, it's a high percentage shot there. Off a great cut and the delivery from Jacob Grandison to swell the lead to 18 for Duke with a flurry to finish off this first half. Final four seconds. Sturdivant got stripped. Coleman got it off and can't knock it down. And John Shire loves the finish for his Blue Devils to close the first half. He has to because they've done it on the defensive end. They did it on that possession. They've done so so far this half. And they shot the three-point basketball better. Just great half by Duke. 18 points is the lead for Duke. Our halftime score, 43-25. We get you to the point. So when you're winning from behind the three-point line, you win in, in the paint. You know, this is why you're up 18 at the half. If you're Georgia Tech, you got to come out. I think they have to do a little bit more and attack this team before the defense gets set. They forced five turnovers, but they have yet to score off, the, off any turnover. And I think Duke is doing a great job like that, as you see, forcing them to catch the ball outside the three-point line. Debo Coleman with a strong take and Lively blocks him. That's the impact of Lively being in. He's an excellent shot blocker, as we talked about. And I think he and Franklin, you know, Howard both have played really well as, as a five man matchup in this game. Five points, five rebounds, and now three blocks for Derek Lively. Kyle Filipowski's got 16 now. That's. His development there in the post and in punishing a smaller defender is why this team is so scary. And his ability to play four and then guard you on the perimeter on this end of the floor. I, I think that's why this team, the ceiling, is going to continue to stay high because of Filipowski's versatility. He's out on Jalen Moore. Lost the handle. Recovers. Just Filipowski blocks the just shot. Great defense. I mean, let me just talk about it. his versatility on both ends of the floor. and. When they get the Rick White hit back, it's going to get even better. Mitchell. All Duke out of the gates. Josh Pastner, a minute 14 into the second half, needs a timeout. Duke is steamrolling the Jackets in Atlanta. And 16 more so far. And he's done it in so many different ways. Getting the unselfish pass there by Ryan Young, driving it there, finishing, shooting some shooting shots on the perimeter. I mean, he's doing it all. But again, it's his versatility that makes this team so difficult to guard right now. And he's picked it up, as we talked about it all year, all, all broadcast. Just him getting better each and every game. He's over his rookie lull in the middle of the season, and now he's picking it right back up, playing as well as anybody in the country. He's got a twin brother named Matt, and Brian Eskelson recruited Matt. Kyle's twin to Harvard, where Matt is a freshman. Brian's in his first year on Josh Pastner's staff here at Georgia Tech. 
we were chatting with him pregame, and he said, well, yeah, of course, I recruited Kyle as well yeah. during his sophomore season of high school to <laughs> Harvard. Then it appeared, well, he might be ranked a little bit higher than where Harvard typically lands recruits. So the Harvard coaching staff, of course, led by Tommy Abaker, they flagged that for the Duke staff that this might be a guy you'd have some interest in. Yeah, when a guy grows to seven feet and, and the skill set continues to improve, you kind of know when the rankings, he shoots up the rankings that might be out of our reach. And Tommy Amica just looking out for his program he's very fond of. It was interesting talking with Brian Eskelton as well about what he saw in Filipowski through his high school years. And he said, I thought he would be a first round pick, but I didn't think this soon that he would develop the lower half strength to play bully ball in, in some of what he's seeing on film coming into this game from Filipowski so far. Mike, well, I've had, we've had multiple conversations today with people, and you can attest that that was the conversation coming from the staff, and now the other the visiting staff is talking about no one saw this from, from Kyle at the beginning of the season. Proctor gets into the mid range, Smith the rebound. This is part of the game. I think Georgia Tech has to attack Duke before they establish their defense. Howard missed the shot, and then Mitchell is fouled by Davon Smith. That's Smith's second. I just think Georgia Tech has to play a little bit more like that. And Davon Smith, just he's their leading rebounder, so athletic, just battling on the glass. and See a little bit of a frustrating foul there. So you're saying when, when you see transition, yes. you, you just got to take you it, even go. if it's a you little bit go. of a force. They're struggling. Duke switches everything, so it's difficult for them to score off their cutting. And I think the other underrated thing is when you run a Princeton-style offense, it's most effective when your big is a really good passer. That's not Rodney Howard's strength. Oh, what a lob for Lively from Tyrese Proctor. Man, you can just see that coming. Howard. Had it roll off the rim, defended by Lively. Yeah, you don't want to get into a jumping contest with a footer. You don't usually win those. <laughs> <laughs> you don't win those. Seven foot one, Derek Lively springing for that one. He's Let's got go. seven and five. Why not? He wanted a second triple. Why Hit not? one in the first half. Why not? He's making threes. He's catching bodies, dunking on people. Why not shoot his second one? So he's doing a great job of pushing. Howard out, not letting him catch it as deep. And Howard looking for somewhere to go. Now finds Miles Kelly with just two points until that three. Yeah, he's the guy. He's got to get going as well. We talked about it in the open again. Smith and Kelly has got to lead this team offensively if they want to get back and get competitive in this game and really competitive for the rest of the ACC season. A couple of ball screens from Lively. He rolls. Proctor floats for two. I'm such a huge fan of Proctor's game. I think as he physically matures and gets a little, gets settled in his role here, I think he'll be great. What do you like most? I, I just think his calmness. He's been a guy who's been thrown into different situations with Roach being in and out of the lineup. He's played off the ball. He's played point. That's not an easy thing to do with the team with all the accolades and everything that comes with uh, playing for Duke basketball. Shire wanted Duke to push. Mitchell driving on the baseline, and he will go to the free throw line on the other side. Ward, we have seen the best from Derek Lively offensively. If tonight. you want to know why he's the number one recruit in the country, here's why. Catching bodies here, Smith 45. So today's game had made 32 buckets. Yeah. 31 of them had been at the rim. He's got three more makes today, two of them at the rim, including that lob, his 27th dunk. Again, he's such, he's, he's, you see his length, but he's such an athletic big that again, when he drives, he's going to help the guards get to the rim because if you help off him, they just got to throw it up to the rim. He's going to go up and elevate and dunk it like he just did there a few minutes ago, and that's what he brings. I mean, as a number one recruit, you're expecting all of this offense. That'll come later in his career. Right now, his, super, his superpower, I like to call it, is running the floor, being an athletic, defending and rebounding, and, and he's doing it at a high level right now. John Shire two days ago made an interesting comparison. He said, look, go back to Mark Williams freshman year. He wasn't playing a lot. Yeah. I remember doing a January game where Mark Williams turned it over three times right away and they yanked him in a couple of minutes. But John Shire said by the end of the year, Mark Williams was dominating teams and that set the stage for what Williams did last year. 
Well, one thing they the, the true term here in this league and everything that happens and you just you see it. You can you know watch him and when he's doing these things, they're good. Like right now, he's controlling the paint. Howard's had a few flashes for Georgia Tech. Outside of that, these guards are unable to attack him and switch him. That's what his length and athleticism helps his team out at the defensive end. Like he is the one true shot blocker there. He wants it again. There it is. Oh, and he throws down another. <laughs> On cue. This is the impact that this young man has. Howard walked with it. Wow. I mean, you could just see him coming, and they're throwing it up there. You can't get up there. Backside guards. There's nothing Maxwell can do there. Is that a guard? You just got to watch. You got to get in front of him well beforehand. But when he elevates, he's catching that at the square. Guy who's only scored in double figures once in his freshman season. He had 11 points against Ohio State. He's got nine in this one to go along with six rebounds and a trio of blocks. Now you're going to see the difference, and they're going to get Filipowski right there, and he's going to get that shot. It's just difficult. Now, now what do you do? And he got that shot because Lively last time got the dunk, and then you leave the best player in the gym, you know, open at the elbow right there to, to get the 15 foot jump shot. And it's just it's just a difficult matchup right now for Georgia Tech because they can't stop him. And again, now he's in the passing lane. He's doing what he's done all game, eliminating that pass. Proctor dish. Mitchell backs it out. Roach steps in. Two or three. His third one of the night. Just great basketball here on Duke. No let up. If you're Georgia Tech. What do you do? You got it. You definitely got to take care of the basketball. But again, they're doing a great job of trying it. Duke, uh, Georgia Tech wants to get the ball to that elbow right there and initiate their offense. Too strong on a triple try from Javon Franklin and rebound number seven for Derek Lively. 13 3, or rather 16 3, the second half scoring edge for Duke. Georgia Tech's got to be careful with that when Franklin and these guys start taking threes. That's not what they usually do, and that's not their strength. And I know you're down. You know about a lot here, but Roach again. Just the way the game started, the way it is right now. Roach with back-to-back -back threes, the way he started the scoring for Duke in the first half, and you know with a young group, this is their this is their style of playing. And Georgia Tech's going to have to show up. I mean, they're they're down big now. I mean, they're, they're, it's just a 32-point game right now, and, and there there will be no let up on this team. Trust me, I've been on the backside of some of these losses, and it's not fun at all. Howard misses. Filipowski clears. Roach has four threes of the eight for Duke in this one. Filipowski can knock it down. The bench was ready to erupt. Lively stripped it free and earns another possession for Duke. Now Tech's going to get out of the zone and go to their man-to-man -man defense. Roach feeling it. Why not? Wanted another Mitchell battles. Good block out from Coleman. And it'll stay at this end of the floor with Duke. Wow, I mean, what an onslaught from John Shire's group. Georgia Tech, late first half, about four and a half to go. They had cut it to seven. It yeah. was 30 to 23. And since then, a Duke demolition. Well, when your game plan was eliminate three, it was give them threes and it controlled the paint, they were controlling the paint anyway and knocking down threes and you know it, it's difficult to just completely change your game plan in the middle of a game when you come in locked in and thinking that you're going to kind of fall on your sword so to speak with that type of game plan. Roach. Franklin the rebound. It is 19-3 Duke in the second half. Georgia Tech is one of ten this half until that three from Maxwell. So wait, I, I think they got to do more of that in general. I don't know if they can come back and get into this one but scoring against in transition again, I think it's something they have to look forward to trying to score in the first eight seconds. Not, nothing else goes goes your way. Then you run your half court offense after that. Tipped away by Franklin stays with Duke. And Georgia Tech isn't a pressure team. They usually try to control the pace and tempo of a game. Kind of hold you in the 60s and low 70s at that. And Duke's already with 12 minutes to go already at 62 points. And the scoring woes of the Yellow Jackets is here, to, is here right now. It's what has been ailing his team all year long. Stability to score. And who is going to score for him? 30% from the floor in this one. That's what we told you in the first half. Josh Pastner has been lamenting throughout ACC play. He said, really, with the exception of that win over Miami, we just have not shot it well. Franklin battles for the steal. The Jackets do push again. 
Coleman gets wrapped up by Blakes, who commits the foul and sends us to a timeout. Duke is doubling up Georgia Tech here in Atlanta. Like this. Next four games, you get Wake at home, North Carolina at home a week from today, then at Miami, at Virginia. So the question, Randolph Childress, is what do you take out of what you have seen so far today from Duke that you think translates in that big of a stretch for them? Well, I think their defense is getting better, as we talked about, and it's a team that's getting more comfortable. We talked about the last two road games. They were more competitive. Early on, Wake was the team that beat them at home. They kind of started that. Carolina, you know, and as they continue on and as, as the season gets on, they're getting better and better in their role play. And, and that's the thing you wanted to see them do. We thought they were a little better than Georgia Tech coming in. They're proving us right with that. And they're just playing good basketball right now. But their defense has to travel with them if they're going to win at Wake. And then obviously one of the biggest rivalry in college basketball against Carolina. And then you got Miami and Virginia. That's a tough sled. How about their offense? What do you make of them at that end of the floor? Because coming into today, 43% field goal percentage. Yeah. Currently, their lowest field goal percentage in a season since 1959-60, that season. Well, they rely a lot on their freshmen, as we know. But some of that is they've had so many injuries. The guys have been in and out of the lineup. You know, Derek Whitehead, we talked about his injury. He was their second leading offensive scorer in ACC play. Now he's back out of the lineup. And you know, we're hoping to get him back quickly. So let's just, I, I think the question becomes, as we said, they've only had their full complement roster in 12 of their 20 games so far this season. And so Shire's kind of shuffling to see who's available, and that's dictating their style of play. So when they get everybody healthy, I think that'll dictate what we see from this team going forward. Jalen Blakes playing with that mask for his broken nose. Grandison at the rim with two more for Duke. Brian did some great job of just knowing the shot clock. Student body tried to trick him a little bit there and give him a 5 4 3 2 1 countdown. Wasn't biting. No, not at all. Good finish from Javon Franklin at the rim. You mentioned Dariq Whitehead. If you're just joining us, he's out today after the injury Monday against Virginia Tech, which fortunately a whole lot yes. better than yeah. it initially looked like. Absolutely. MRIs came out negative. John Shire said Dariq is relieved at the results he got. Shire told us pregame that it's a ligament strain. It's not Achilles. Yes. It's not calf. It's lower leg, a strain to a ligament within that leg. And yeah. certainly seems like it could be sooner rather than later. Yeah, it's, it's one of those ligaments in the leg that I, I don't think coaches are, can pronounce. It's a, some doctor's term needs to, to let everyone know. But he, we saw him early. He was shooting around, moving around really well. And I expect him to come back sometime in the, in the near future. But he looked good today, seeing him pregame. And, just really happy for him for a young man that had a foot injury early in the season. He had totally gotten himself in shape. He was starting to play his best basketball. So hopefully he can come back quickly and get back to that. Yeah, it was a broken foot to the other foot now yeah. in the preseason that slowed him to begin the year, of course. And yeah, we walked in to the gym about two hours before the game today, yeah. and he was shooting. Yeah. He's not jumping yet, but he was out there in warm-up uniform and getting some shots up. Yeah, anytime you're that comfortable getting out early doing those things, and he was here even before we got here, and, and we always get in early. And so to see him out there getting his work in early lets you know that he's feeling better and that I would expect him to get back on the court in the near future. Most of the time we get there early. Well, sometimes. It's your fault today. Yeah, it was. He wasn't here as early as usual. No. <laughs> With some car issues, a malfunction. Uh, it wasn't your fault, though. I won't, I won't blame you for that. Thank you. Randolph Childers, Mike Bonico, our entire crew behind the scenes, midway through this second half on the flats. Tyrese Proctor has been great. He's got a season high eight assists. Good feed for Young from Grandison. The difficult part about when you play this Duke team now, now they've got their bench players out there, but that's the experience coming in now. And, you know, Young and Grandison and, and and Blake's just provide so much depth and, and experience with this group. Take it, take it. Maxwell driving on Blake's. Franklin again. He's got a 10 points now to lead Georgia Tech. Franklin always plays bigger than you think. And you look at his size, and he's just always, he plays like he's 6'9 or 6'10, and he's real bouncy and with great length. And he's finished the last couple of baskets here. Grandison from the free throw line. Miscommunication on a switch there by Georgia Tech, and 
That's Ranston open for the free throw line jump. Under nine and a half to go here in this second half. Maxwell's got eight. Wanted another triple. Good battle on the boards from Franklin, but it belongs to Duke. There's enough time if you enjoy the tech. You want to mount a comeback, but they're just not built the way they run their Princeton offense to, you know, to take those kind of shots and quick shots. They need to try to score it on defense, getting stops and getting out in transition. But this team operates better when they get to run their half court offense and run their Princeton cuts. But on, when they get defensive stops, that's when they got to look to take those threes. They've got Smith, Moore, Franklin, Coleman, and Maxwell. The five on the floor for Josh Pastner. Subs on the Duke side with Lively and Shoot coming back in. And Brandison connects from deep. A ninth made three for the Blue Devils. They're just shooting lights out right now. And again, you know, the game plan is out of the window. You just, as Pastor said himself, you just gotta, you're gonna dare him to shoot threes. They've made nine already. And, you know, when they're doing that, and that was your game plan to stop that, you just say, hey, let's get ready for the next one. Maxwell backing down, shoot. Getting some run today for the first time in three and a half weeks, and Maxwell scores over him. Yeah, he had a hit pointer there, and he's a guy that's a natural scorer that, you know, if he could come around, he can give them a different you know, dimension that I don't know if they have. Quick step from Roach, and Davon Smith commits the foul. We should mention with Georgia Tech as well, they're still without typical starter Lance Terry. He's out for a third straight game with a hamstring issue. And he's a guy who came in from Gardner Webb. And you see, he was chewing up a lot of minutes. And Josh Pastner said to us a few weeks ago, their best perimeter defender. Yeah, and he also was shooting the ball well. He was shooting 34% from three. And it's just one thing this team needs is another guy that can knock down shots. And, you know, he's dearly missed right now with that hamstring injury. Grandison comes up short. He was too open on that one. I think that's what it was. <laughs> Good problem to have, but sometimes harms you. Maxwell short as well. Lively rips down a rebound and draws a foul. And Derek Lively has matched a season high with nine boards. He looks healthy. And I think the biggest thing is he's a young man that had a calf injury earlier and it cost him his preseason. He missed a game or two early in the year and missed a couple of games with an illness and sickness. And now he's he's rounded into shape and he's coming around and being that athletic player, that 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 force interior on the interior for this Duke front court that we knew he'd become. He's showing you why he was the number one recruit in the country. I think people were just looking at his numbers from an offensive standpoint and expecting something different. But this is what he does right here. Extra possession. Kicks it out. They move it for Mitchell. On the drive! With the right hand. With the... I'm just such a huge fan of that young man. No one plays their role better than Mark Mitchell does. He does, you know, with all the freshman success, he doesn't get as much. I think he defends multiple positions. He knows what it is. He doesn't take bad shots and... He's going to be a force for the Blue Devils in the future. How good a defender is he? Him, I, Leaky Black. I, I think he's, I think Leaky is one of the more versatile ones because his length, he can guard more point guards. I think Mark Mitchell can, but I just think his, he's been playing on the offensive end somewhat out of position more so because of all the injuries and the shuffling of everyone in and out of the lineup. Shoot can't connect. Inside of seven to go. Kelly left alone. Swirls one out, rebound Roach. And Kelly's just continuing his slump. He was four of 23 in the last three games coming in. And, you know, you, you want for his confidence that he take and make those kind of shots. And ignore the score. You just got to continue to play. Mitchell into the lane, gets the roll. And that's because of having running the ball screen with Derek Lively. It's one of those things that don't show up in a stat sheet. The big doesn't want to help because if he does, you throw the lob to him. So he stays with Lively. Mark Mitchell just turns the corner with his dominant hand and just gets to the rim with ease. Mitchell's got 11, 5, and 4. We get a foul with 6-10 to go with Duke dominating Georgia Tech. Lively had some slams. Mitchell gets involved for the Blue Devils. Clemson at 9-1, Virginia with a win today at 8-2. You see the rest of the top eight. Who do you like? What stands out to you? 
the biggest surprise in, in the turn in the conference this year is Clemson. I, I think they're nine and one and I and I believe they're the best team in the ACC. And will be at the end. And I do. I think they'll finish this thing out provided they stay healthy. I think PJ Hall and I think Hunter Tyson's playing as well as anyone and, and deserving of right now the first half player of the year in the ACC and Chase Hunter gets going and they got to get Brevin Galloway back. I mean his injury from you know from scarier than Derek Whitehead's injury. I mean get him back and get him back in the lineup and playing and we'll see how long he's out but I, I think they have it all. I think they with Chase Hunter being back the team they defend they've always had an, an identity on the defensive end and they'll be a tough out. Yeah, if you haven't heard of Brevin Galloway's injury, we no, won't update it no, here. No, we'll no, leave that no. to your search engine of choice. But he is already selling shirts with a play on words on his website. Smith doesn't get the follow way to go after the fancy football. Yeah, I, I, he he sounded like he was still being medicated when he was explaining. It's just a scary thing to hear. I I don't even know what to say about it. I mean, it's just a. Difficult thing, and you just hope he's okay. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. Yeah, we wish him all the, best. Say, all the best to him, and glad to know that he felt comfortable enough to do that. Christian Reeves into the game, 21 in black for Duke. He flashes open with the stop. And Christian Reeves will be another guy's embarrassment of seven footers that the Duke Blue Devil team has. I mean, he has the size and length, and buried behind a bunch of guys. But he'll he'll. You'll, you'll hear about him in the, in the coming years I mean, as he stuck behind some of the more talented freshmen in the country. But another big guy that I think will be being Durham for years to come and has the requisite skill set to, to be a really good player. Mitchell off target. Reeves draws a foul. All right, so some other scores in the ACC today. Virginia 76 57 a win over Boston College in Charlottesville and then NC State Man. in Winston-Salem yeah. against Wake who has now dropped three in a row NC State wins 79 77 yes in the game that preceded ours that's a major win for Wolfpack I mean that team is dangerous we know about that backcourt of Jaquel Joyner and Quavin Smith there and in Casey Marcel there as good as any guard play in the country hmm. and who saw Burns today with his 31 and 9? I mean, he was outstanding. Just giving him that presence inside. And if he can give you anything close to that, and look out, that the Wolfpack team is they're legit. DJ Burns. Wow. You heard that correctly from Randolph. 31 and 9. nine. He and was 14 of 26 from the floor and led NC State to that win on the road. He was their offense in the second half of that game. And just a credit to him and that staff. Just a great road win. And Deeks, as we talked about, the next up for those guys is Duke. And on the road, they got to turn things around. They've dropped the last three conference games in a row. I saw them Wednesday at Pitt. Pitt hit 18 threes, a program record. And Blake Hinson matched an individual program record with eight of those 18 for the Panthers. Well, they're a team that's playing right now well on the offensive end and just struggling defensively. And it's a tough place to struggle in this league. If in this league there's so many good players, if you're not defending at a high level, you're just not going to win. You know, there there is for so long you can just line up and outscore people. At some point, you got to start matching up and taking things away. Blake's had it picked up by Davon Smith. Man, Davon Smith is still playing hard here for Georgia Tech down the stretch, battling with Duke in control, ready to get a road win in Atlanta. Number 20 Miami at Pitt and Miami's up by five at the break in maybe the game of the weekend of the conference. I, I think those are two really good teams there. I mean the guard play in that game right there is whoever wins the backcourt matchup will win that game. And it looks like the Miami backcourt is off to a hot start on the road against Pitt. It's a tough team to play against. They're playing really good basketball as well. Stick around coming up top of the hour. We will get you to Tallahassee. Florida State is hosting. Number 24 Clemson who gets back Chase Hunter. That is big for Brad Brownell and the Tigers. It is. Definitely want to get him back. And Duke right now has cleared their bench and allowing everyone to play here. They turn it over as John Shire empties the bench. We told you earlier about Brian Eskelson, Georgia Tech assistant coach. 
came over from Harvard. Harvard transfer, Kale Catchings, 12 in black. He's into the game. A guy that Brian Eskelson knows well. He knows very well. Former player for him through the years. <laughs> uh, Tommy Amaker's staff. T8. Howard is backing down on Reeves, who commits the foul with the shot clock winding down. Yeah, it was cool chatting with Brian Eskelson about Kale Catchings earlier today. He said, this guy is super smart. Coming out of high school, 35 on the ACT. And instead of going into a, a situation when he transferred where he could play more, yeah. maybe at the mid-major level or, or low-major level, well, he wants to be a sports agent. So decided to go to Duke and uh, the Brotherhood. That's a pretty good place to start for connections in that line of work. Great to have teammates that's going to be pros that maybe one day you, you can represent one day. So he's a lot smarter than we are. I can tell you that. Sheldon Williams was here at the game today. Rodney Hood also in the building. We got word that Duke legend Mike Buckmeyer was here as well. Coming up on two to go here at McCamish Pavilion. Reeves kicks out for Jaden Shute. Driving on Davon Smith. Tough ball away for Shute and his teammates love it. Great drive there. Under control. Playing off two feet. Reverse pivot and shot his fade away. Just those are the type of plays you want to make this time of the game because you want to show the coach that you can do that so that when there's a closer games that he can put you in the lineup. And, how about Jalen Blakes blocking the three-point shot from Maxwell. Blakes finishes, plus a foul, and everything coming up Duke here today. Batman Blakes with the block, and the end one on the other end. Just great defense coming down and finishing. And no mass is going to slow him down. That's so difficult to play with. I don't think people understand how uncomfortable that is to have something like that on. And credit to that young man for toughing it out. And I mean, you can see that Blake's over the course of these last few games has been fidgeting with it a whole lot. It's the most annoying thing ever because it's right there and you have to wear it, but it's just sitting right there and you can literally see it and you can feel it. It just feels weird to have something on your face <laughs> like that. And Oh, I remember that, and I, I don't envy you that. You did it? Oh, God, yes. yes. NBA or college? College. College. Oh, Batman doing his part here down the stretch. Blake's had it roll off. Catchings trying to follow. Scoots out to Howard, who starts it back for the Jackets. How long do you have to wear it? Uh, a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks. Actually, my team. You know who broke my nose? One of my teammates. Duncan broke my rim. Uh, the nose. Tim Duncan a, broke your nose? Yeah, him and Joe Smith were fighting for a rebound, and I guess I had no business in there, and his elbow hit me and broke my nose. Intentionally? I think it was. He claims <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> he claims it wasn't, but I I still hold it against him. <laughs> Can I put you on the spot? Absolutely. You and I have talked privately about mm -hmm. Tim Duncan, and you're still close friends with him. Mm -hmm. What's your best Tim Duncan story? Oh, you know what? It probably would be his recruiting visit. I mean, him coming in there and just his story. You know what great player he is, but one of the funniest people that you'll ever know. He doesn't share that side with everyone, but really? his recruiting visit, he comes in and it's snowing and we're at an IHOP eating breakfast and Odom is like, hey, I need you to come on this visit for this guy. And it's Tim and he's coming and I show up and it is freezing rain, like an inch of snow outside. And he has like a a short sleeve shirt and flip flops on. <laughs> <laughs> He's sitting at the breakfast just shivering. I'm looking like, Coach, this dude can't play. Like, man, they wasted my time. Like, the only thing I got out of this that was I'm a like, swimmer. Hey, I'm like, He's a swimmer from St. Croix. So that's where my name came from. I always called him St. Croix because of that. Like, this St. Croix, this dude is coming here in February with flip flops on and it's snowing outside. Like, get this dude out of here. He can't help, <laughs> he can't help us win games. Like, what are you doing? Boy, did I get that one wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I got that one. Me, I got it wrong. Shoot scores as we approach the final 30 seconds. So Duke will get the 6 and 4 in the ACC, 15 and 6 overall before this big four game stretch coming up. You can watch them Tuesday against Wake Forest on ESPN. And then a week from today, also on ESPN against Carolina. Meanwhile, Georgia Tech 
will fall to one in ten overall. They're at Louisville Wednesday, then at NC State next weekend here on ACCN. We're going to find out a lot about this Georgia Tech team next week at that Louisville game. Road game for the basement of the ACC. They got to come out and play. Credit to Duke basketball here today. Just an outstanding performance on both ends of the floor. Credit to those guys. Made threes. Destroyed the scouting report against Georgia Tech when they challenged them, and everyone played well. There's a lot to look forward to if you're a Duke Blue Devil. Remember, two more big ones to come here on ACCN. Clemson at Florida State coming up, then Syracuse at Virginia Tech.